Well, I want to share my experience with this oil. Yes, this isn't a truck, but in this video, I will talk about this vehicle and this oil and what I have found. When I bought this vehicle, I noticed that the inside internals are all brown, kind of cooked. Um, it's not from abuse. It's just someone taking literally 5,000 mile intervals for 5,000 miles. And if you do some basic math, I bought this thing in 2019 with 132,000 miles. It's a 95. There's not a whole lot of miles. There's not a whole lot of... Uh, uh, 5,000 mile oil intervals done to this engine. So engine's kind of caked, baked, whatever you want to call it. Pretty brown inside. So when I bought it, I saw that and I started running engine uh, engine conditioner, oil conditioner, yellow bottle, Rizlo makes it. Phenomenal product. But to my surprise, it did not give me the results that I was looking for or what I've had in the past. So I guess I've never had such a dirty engine inside. So I saw this oil. It's a fairly new product on the market. And I was surprised. Exactly what it's shown is what I was after. I understood that I need a slow, steady clean. And it always threw me off guard, you know, adding oil additives to oil. So I knew, that I always had this concern, like, scientifically, what does that do? What does that do to the oil package? So when this oil came out, I was really uh, interested in trying it. So let me share my experience. Sorry, guys, it's hot in this building. My AC went out. I think it's like 80-something degrees in here. Anyways. I know some of you guys are laughing 80 something degrees in the building is not hot. The sun isn't cooking on me, but still I feel hot. So using the engine restore or the Rizlone product with the engine uh, oil conditioner, it slowed down the consumption quite a bit, but it didn't stop it. And I found it very odd. I think it has like 320 miles on this oil. And I find it very odd that the oil has not burnt off. I put exactly five quarts. That's what H22s. Oh shoot, you can't tell. Jack squid we can. That's what H22s take. And look at that. On the mark. That thing is full. 320 miles later. Now, I'm going backwards. I just found this out. I was uh, expecting to add a little bit. And I don't need to add anything. So Let's back it up a little bit. After after I did an oil change, I was not expecting no miracles, right? I was I was under the impression it's going to take a few oil changes to see some results, and you know, buckle up for the ride. No big deal, right? Like the bottle says, uh, with continuous use. Where did it say that? Oh, look at that. Come on, folks. Removes up to 100% of the deposits with continuous use. I was thinking like three oil changes, which I'll start noticing. But about 100 miles into it, I like cracking the VTEC, not because it's so fast. I just love that sound of dock VTEC. You guys know, B16s, B18s, H22s, they have that awesome sound of VTEC. Ain't no turbo kicking in. But kick, kick, uh, VTEC kicked in, yo. You know what it's about if you grew up in that area. Um, it started coming in crisp. It started coming in with a thunder, if you know what I mean. It just like, boom, you know. Instead of kind of transitioning and getting deeper, like, boo, you know. It's just like, boo, like it was crisp. I think that's the best way I could describe it. So that caught me off guard. Plus or minus 100 miles into the oil change, you know, cracking the VTEC and all of a sudden it's crispier. It does pull harder. It does pull harder in, in VTEC now. But that was secondary. Primary, I noticed like the sound. It started sounding more crisp. Then I noticed the pull, right? I continued doing, I'm like, oh wow, that sounds real nice. So now, me having the vehicle in here, and I, was, I popped the hood because I parked my diesel truck for a couple days, seems like I don't need it, and that's what I usually do. I'll cycle through my cars, you know? Really low mileage, 500, crazy E55 that I need to put a little bit of time money into, and then I enjoy my little Honda, right? Pop the hood, check the oil, and lo and behold, it is full. Let me show you. Hopefully, I can show you. Hopefully, it will zoom in. Look at that. Topped off. Well, that doesn't really show it. But anyways, now, I wasn't expecting that. Not in 320 miles, guys. It quit burning oil. It went from a quart every 300 to about half a quart to every 300. I mean, that's significant, right? That's half of the usage. Now, it's still at full, and I am excited. So, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say I am not a Valvoline guy, by any means. Valvoline has never came through and surprised me with anything. If anything, they let me hang in with the power stroke. And then this thing is a whole 180. So, whatever they've done with that oil that I showed you, that stuff works, guys. 
Oh, absolutely works. Don't drag your feet. I'm not telling you it's miracle oil. I'm what I'm trying to tell you. It is not snake oil. This stuff works and it works well. Um, if your oil, if your engine's really dirty like mine, I feel like I should yank the oil filter probably at about a, a thousand or two thousand miles into this interval. As slow as, or as little as I drive this vehicle, I highly doubt I'll hit 3,000 miles in a year. So I might as well do the thousand mile mark. Um, typically what I find myself when I cycle my vehicles, I end up putting like two, 300 miles on the cycle. Like I'll go drive it for a couple days and it'll end up being a couple hundred miles or 300 miles if I drive it a little longer. So, you know, it, it's not gonna get much miles, but the point is I'm excited to go on with that oil filter not in there the whole 3000 is what i'm trying to say about a thousand miles i'll do the oil filter i cut it open and see what's up i don't know what to say who shouldn't use it but what i'll definitely say anyone with an older vehicle and higher mileage put that stuff in it will clean up your vehicle and if your engine's really dirty mine didn't have heavy caking it had the heavy burnt like heavy brown stuff you know what i'm trying to say let me show you hopefully there's enough light I wish I could turn on a flashlight or had a flashlight around here. Well, let's go find one. Uh, so, it's not the gooey stuff. It's not the thick burnt stuff on there. It's literally just brown walls. And actually, let's show. Let's go. I'll show you what to look for when you open your fill cap. You know, if you have nice shiny parts and... Uh, you got no oil caked on there, you probably have nothing to worry about. But, you know, on another note, if you do have uh, hydraulic lifters like all these GM products I own, um, definitely wouldn't hurt to install it. All right, so if you take a look in it, right? There you go. You see? God, I wish I could have done a better job. You see, it's slowly, like on the bottom right there, you see how clean it is? It wasn't like that before. You see how the wall is, I'd call the carbon is delaminating? De no, it's not me scrubbing anything. You can kind of see up top, you see that carbon buildup right there? That's how the whole engine was. And then you kind of see it delaminating and washing away slowly. Guys, this is how the product works. Mm. Turned out, this video turned out a lot better than I anticipated. I, I did not think I could uh, show that. So the, the whole engine was a nice brown, deep brown color, and it's slowly washing it away. That's what you want to see. You don't want to dump heavy cleaner in there and uh, have it all plug up all the oil galleys and stuff. So this oil liter literally carries it away with itself. It just dissolves it slowly, and that's what you want. That's why I like the Rizlone product. Um, that's what it did, kind of slow and steady. When I did Reslon, a couple of oil changes back to back on this Prelude. Keep in mind, I've owned this Prelude from 2019. I don't even know if it has 140,000 miles on it, so that should tell you something. So, yeah. Oh. If you own a GM, what I was going at, and you have hydraulic lifters, probably not going to hurt to run. Not going to hurt to run this oil. They only have it in 0, 20, 5, 20, and 530. I really wish they had them in 1030. I would favor 1030 because I think this is what this engine needs, but 530 isn't going to hurt anything. Um, but the GM products with lifters, absolutely, it's a go go to. Uh, any older vehicle with carbon buildup, definitely go for it, guys. I couldn't, um, can't say I had 100,000 miles of, uh, you know, miles to check it. But I'm really skeptical with all these oils claiming all the stuff, you know, commonly defaulted to snake oil stuff. This ain't that, man, this stuff works. So yeah, I'll be running that product in my Yukon as well. I got an 8.1 Yukon. No, that engine is not cake. That engine is sparkly clean. It has like 200,000 on it. But still, that little bit of dirt in the hydraulic lift or somewhere else just hiding out and out of plain sight, it's never gonna hurt to run that oil. Oh, that's definitely gonna be my go-to to older uh, oils older engines uh, as always guys may the lord bless you may all mighty fine day and just trying to look out for you let me know in the comment section if you guys found anything uh, kind of off guard like stuff that caught you off guard like this this product caught me off guard and i'm sharing it with you so anyways god bless you Check. bye